Hey everybody, and welcome to the Renew Show, where we seek to give you real knowledge for your journey. Uh, we have a special show today, where we're actually going to have a question and answer session with the host, and I have some good questions for uh, both Julie and Rob. Uh, but before we get into that, um, Julie and Rob are both going to say hello, and Rob has a special announcement. Hey everybody, it's me Jules. I'm really excited about tonight. Um, I have some good questions I finally came up with. It was hard, but I got some good ones. So um, I'm a little nervous about your questions, but I'm looking forward to tonight. Hi everybody, um, excited to be here tonight. I'm glad that you could tune in and watch the show. I do have an update for you guys on Deanna Bray. She had her surgery today and I did speak with her fiance, um, Ron, this morning, said she was in recovery, that she was doing very, very well. And then Deanna called me about 35 minutes ago and touched base with me. Uh, she said she's been making videos all day today um, when she could between the morphine and sleeping and all that good jazz. And she's going to post some of those videos to her YouTube channel tomorrow. I'll be doing an update tonight for um, on her channel for people and friends of hers that may watch her channel but um, don't tune in to renew, which that's crazy. Why wouldn't they tune in to renew? But um, the other thing is, is they did not have to put a feeding tube in her, so that is amazing. Uh, there was talk that there was going to have to be a feeding tube in, uh, surgically put in, and that she was going to have to eat through that feeding tube for three to six months. So, um, Luckily, that did not have to happen, so that is great, and that's the update that I have for her for today. The other thing I want to touch base on really, really quick was regarding um, Dee Dee from Dee Dee's Journey. She's doing better. She's still in the same um, rehab facility that she's been in in Detroit. Um, I have spoke with her via text and also through cards. Um, she's taking some steps, she's learning how to do that, and she's pushing forward and she's working hard. So that's amazing, you guys. That's absolutely amazing. So our thoughts and prayers and well wishes and positive energy and everything go out to both of those and anyone else in this community that is struggling right now. All right. Well, um, you know, for uh, both of them, we're just really, just really grateful to hear that they're uh, both doing well. And... Um, you know, just we're just so excited to be a part of this community. Um, I saw I don't even know where, but I saw someone's video where someone posted about, um, you know, just struggling, and somebody else said, well, instead of calling this a community, we should call it family because that's how it feels like, and everybody interacts with each other, and you know, really cares about what's going on outside of just trying to lose weight. And I think that's what's really great about the weight loss community on YouTube. So now we get to get into some questions. Um, I think that we should actually go into the one question topic that we had um, to kind of get the ball rolling um, because we may not have questions yet because we just started. Um, and the topic was, or question was, just dealing with stalls and dealing with um, trying to work through time periods where you're working hard or even if you lose your motivation or if you're working hard and the weight's still not coming off for whatever reason. So, um, you know, just trying to talk through some of that. And I think that's going around a lot in the community. Um, and I would like to hear first from uh, Rob, because I know you just made a video recently about some changes that you're making, things that you're doing. Right. Well, um, <clears throat> I noticed um, probably about two weeks ago that I had came upon a period in the journey where I felt like I was motiv motivated still and I was dedicated to the journey, but my body had said, I'm not dealing with you, and my body went over here um, as far as how it was going to respond to what I was doing. Now, the week before this last one, um, I got off track with um, over snacking and things like that. I did not go into a binge or anything like that, but I was over snacking, and it caused me a 2.5-pound weight gain. I blame it on nothing other than that. I honestly believe that I overate that week. This past week, I had a 2.6 pound gain, taking me up to 5.1 pound gain over the last two weeks. Um, okay, um, I know who's texting me is watching, and I can't get my volume turned down, so please quit texting me. I just have to say that. Um, so um, the issue that I am running into is 
um, I kind of felt like I had stalled out and I needed something to motivate me. So I contacted my friend that's a dietitian, uh, Preston, and he gave me some suggestions and I actually started last um, yesterday a reset which um, resets my system because I think over the over snacking and um, maybe as we get comfortable in our journey uh, we tend to probably pick up more and more processed foods as we go. Um, I feel amazing since I started yesterday. I feel great today. Um, I had said on the video that the liquid that I'm consuming is water all water for three days and along that's only the liquid. Along with that I'm consuming 14 ounces of fish a day, uh, greens, vegetables, uh, fruits. There is some excluded between the fruits and vegetables, but it has to do with carbs and sugars and things like that within those particular ones. Um, some almonds and um, basically making that my diet for three days to help me kind of get leveled out with stuff. So that's where I'm at and I'm just going to stay positive through it. These stalls are going to happen and we just have to push forward. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I guess I can go uh, next since my official weigh-in is going to be tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> just for me, this has been, this is probably the second time in my journey that I've hit a period where I just haven't lost weight and um, there's just been a lot of things going on. I think this month has been hard for me, the last six weeks probably because everything broke down at the same time you know my eating broke down tracking food I just wasn't tracking it wasn't on purpose it wasn't like I was trying to get away with something I just would notice oh I didn't put any what I had in for lunch okay I'll do it later at dinner and then I forget and then it goes on for a couple of days and you know the same thing happened with me with um, you know getting in cardio and other things like that so it's like everything every component of my journey broke down at the same time except weightlifting. The weightlifting I stuck with that and I saw some great gains with that um, but everything else just seemed to break down so for me I just I don't feel the motivation usually when I go through a period where I have a bad week or two I'm motivated like okay it's behind me and I'm ready to go forward I'm ready to just attack it like ah, I'm gonna lose weight I don't feel that this time. I still feel like, oh man, I have to take this like day by day. Like I don't feel that energy that I have, that confidence. So I just, you know, said, okay, here's a plan, and I'm gonna, I guess, f just finalize everything in my mind and probably put it in a video tomorrow. But just, I'm gonna have a small plan, doing small things, making sure I'm tracking, making sure all the little things that I seem to kind of overstep. I think maybe I did get too comfortable, maybe too confident, maybe. You know, I, I don't know exactly. I, I don't even know what to pinpoint. But um, I just now really want to get back to the very basic things that I was doing, you know, at the beginning. Uh, one thing I will say is that I'm going to reset my calories since I haven't been doing cardio consistently. I've only been working out three days a week, lifting weights. I'm going to base my calorie intake on the weightlifting, not on weightlifting plus cardio on other days. That way, if I don't do it, then there's no big deal. You know, if I don't get it in, I'm not stressed that, oh, I didn't get cardio in and then I'm overeating. But I'll eat enough just for that. And if I'm consistent after a while, then I up my calories again. So, you know, we'll just see how that goes for now. Um, but I am excited that I do have a plan um, and I'm not just kind of going through this saying, I hope tomorrow's better than today. But I actually have steps in place that if I take those steps, tomorrow will definitely be better than today. Um, so that's just how I'm looking at it, little baby steps to get myself back to where I was. All right, Julie. Okay, first of all, I want to apologize. I'm having like a lot of computer problems over here. So um, I'm restarting my computer that has the feed, so I can't see anything on there yet. But um, that's what I've been busy doing if you've been wondering like what I'm doing. Um, okay, um, as far as stalls go, you guys know that... Um, those of you who follow my journey, I've recently just got off of a stall. Um, I was stuck for quite a long time, and um, I decided to um, I stopped tracking my food, which sounds kind of silly. That like something you would do um, to stop tracking your food if you're stuck with weight loss, but um, I just felt like I needed to do that because I felt like it was more of a burden to me, and it was really making me over 
overthink things and I was just it was making me obsess about food and I didn't want that anymore so I stopped tracking um, I started um, implementing maybe like some like I I took one week where I took a couple days where I did totally low carb um, the whole two days and um, it got things moving again um, the scale is moving uh, it's been staying um, down to where um, I wasn't before and so that's really good and tomorrow's my weigh in so you guys will have to wait and see what happens there um, I think the key when you get stuck is to be willing to change what you're doing if you're going to continue doing the same exact thing that you've done the entire time that you've been losing and then you get a stall and you keep going I mean your body gets used to what you're doing and if you're not willing to change it you're not going to change your weight it's going to stay um, so it's important to be open to changing things it doesn't mean you have to make a permanent change and say oh my goodness now I have to eat like this for the rest of my life. No, just change it for a couple days and then go back and see if that just confuses your body a little bit, mixes it up. Um, I'm no expert, but this is just what I feel has worked for me in the past. Um, I think um, upping your exercise, uh, even slowing down your exercise, just changing what you're doing is important. And um, as far as mentally, you just have to remember where you started and remember that you don't want to be there again and I always try to look at pictures of where I was and where I am now because I know some of you might be able to relate to this but once you're stuck in that rut and you're stuck um, for months at a time you start forgetting all the progress that you've made up to that point and you start just feeling like you're going nowhere and nothing's changing so it's important to remember how far you have come and um, just keep pushing forward I mean, going back to the way I used to eat is not um, an option. Um, living the life that I used to live, a very sedentary life, that's not an option anymore. Um, so it becomes a habit. I've been on the journey for two years, um, and it, it's just second nature to me now. If I get off track for a day or a week or whatever, it's easy now for me to get back on because I just know that that's what I have to do. And so... Um, that would be my opinion and my take on stall, weight stalls. I think the thing that's really important to mention too and get out there is that when we're on a journey, I always try to say we start with the toolbox and it has all kinds of tools in it and we tend to pick out tools to use for our journey to help us go along and not just necessarily, I know people that's had weight loss surgery we refer to um, their surgery as a tool and that's fine but we all have several different kinds of tools that we use during the journey. I think one important thing to remember is sometimes we may take too many tools out of the toolbox at one time and that can cause us to get frustrated. So if you're tracking, if you're tracking every step you wait, every step you take, everything that goes down your mouth, everything of water, uh, if you're doing all this stuff and it gets to be so consuming that it leads you in a different direction to almost where it's like I'm miserable doing this too. I think we have to take those tools, use those tools to our advantage, but never ever be afraid to put a tool back in the box or pass it off to someone else, so to say, because sometimes you can overwhelm yourself by doing so much on the journey that you get derailed on the true meaning of the journey for health and happiness and whatever someone else's may be. For me, it's health and happiness. Um, I don't want to get bogged down in um, a bunch of rituals that I do that turn me from being obsessed with food and overweight and miserable to miserable because I can't do something without my mind thinking constantly that I'm doing something wrong or I shouldn't be doing this or shouldn't be doing that. That's not a way to live either. So we need to remember, use the tools, never be afraid to put those tools back in the box when you no longer need them or pass them on to someone else. Yeah, I think that's a real good point. Um you know, that we can become frustrated, not just with our progress or lack of progress, but become frustrated with everything that we need to do. And it just reminds me of Jamoki when he came on, our first guest, and I think we all agree with him, where he says the most frustrating thing about his journey is that every meal is a test, that he can't just sit and eat because he's going to eat, but that every meal, 
everything he does, every day, it's a test for him, you know, and he's just kind of tired of having all of these tests every day because there's so many things that he just needs to do that goes into every activity and every meal and everything. Thing. You guys, I see questions starting to come in, and I don't think there's anything wrong with coming back to this issue if time permits, but um, I think we should go ahead and start um, getting on to these questions sure. because they're great, great questions. And um, the first one that I see coming in, I hope I'm right on this, is from Crazy Running Mom Brooke, and this is for anyone or all of us. And when they're for all of us, you guys, we're going to try to keep it as short as we can so we can get to all of this stuff. Um, it says, what if you hit a very rough patch and gain all of your weight back? Would you come back to YouTube? Question mark. Julie, answer that question. Yes, sir. Um, I, I feel that I would come back because especially if I had like shied away and um, gained all this weight back, I, I have seen people leave YouTube and I've seen people come back. And then there's some that have stayed away. And I just, I know how important YouTube is in my journey and the role that it plays for support. And I also want to help others. And by me coming back after I've gained all this weight, I think it would be such an example to so many people and it would encourage other people to do the same. And I agree. And honestly, for the same reasons as Julie, so I won't just repeat what she said. But yeah, I would come back as well for those same reasons. I would come back also. Um, I think there would be some shame involved because you've lost the weight and you come back. And I'm not saying it's something we should be ashamed of, but that's a general instinct. And that's just life in general. If you've lost all this weight and you put it back on, um, you know, you're worried about what people are going to say behind your back or behind the scenes of YouTube. But Without YouTube, I can tell you right now, I would not be sitting where I am today having lost the amount of weight that I've lost. So a uh, remarkable community, remarkable uh, YouTube organization altogether. All right. Um, we have a question from uh, Zen Maiden, and uh, she asks, I guess to all of us, where are you with your weight today in your journey? So who wants to go first? Julie? Julie? I wrote this down because I knew someone would probably ask me that. Um, now this is as of last Wednesday because I can't give away my way in. But um, I have lost 87.6 pounds since my heaviest, which was I started at 241 and currently 153.4. And um, since I had my second baby, I have lost 64.6 pounds, and she will be one year old next week. That's awesome. I, as of this morning, I will give mine away because my official weigh-in was yesterday, and today's one day. So yesterday I weighed in at 234.5, and this morning I weighed in at 232.9. So my official weight right now is 232.9, and that puts me down, I would guess, right around 88, 89 pounds. Um, I'm not a mathematician, so I don't know, but I started at 322. So um, just about 89.1 pounds is what I would guess that I'm down. So ups and downs, we got to take them, we got to roll with them, not let them, uh, not let them discourage us. That's life, up and downs. All right, for me, um, my heaviest was 292, and tomorrow is my way in as well. So um, I'll just say Last month, because I so I've been doing monthly weigh-ins, I was at 226, so that's a loss of 66 pounds. Great. Okay, we, our next question comes from Michael VSG, and he says, "Do any of y'all stress eat? If so, how do you stop it?" And I could totally hear him asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, for me, no, I I don't stress eat. Um, unfortunately, I have a sadder reason I eat just because I love the taste of food and I just, the feeling that it gets gives me from eating. But so no, I don't eat because of stress or emotions. Um, I do not stress eat either. I do not emotionally, I do not behavioral eat. Um, I eat, again, the same reason for Khalif, for the true love of food. I did not know that until I had a breakthrough from Angela, who was on our show last week, uh, <clears throat> said something that set something off in me when she said, um, 
she was throwing this food and basically shoving it down her throat and she never tasted the food. And for me, I'm like, what the hell is she talking about? She never tasted the food. That's the best part. So, and then I'd always wondered, and I'd said to Julie before, and I'd said to Tina and other people, I don't really eat because I'm depressed or I'm sad or I'm happy. I don't eat for those reasons. I eat because I like the food. Now, I know some people disagree with me on that, and um, that's fine. Um, they can disagree. That's their right to disagree, but I know my brain, and no one else can get inside my brain and tell me what it's from. And believe me, I don't eat for emotional or behavioral reading reasons. I eat because I love the taste of those foods. So that's where I'm at with it. And Julie? I, um, I have found myself stress eating at times. Um, it's not like um, a constant thing that I do. I wouldn't call myself an emotional eater. Um, but I have caught myself at times turning to food to help um, soothe my emotions. So I, you know, sometimes I am, but it's not like a constant battle for me in that aspect. But um, when I'm, I actually was kind of stressed out this weekend, and I didn't turn to food, um, but I bit off all my fingernails. I've been growing my nails for like two months, and I bit them all off. So I bite my nails when I'm stressed. Um, but the thing, you know, that I love to do when I'm stressed, upset, happy, anything, I love to run. And that helps me with my stress. Um, just to clarify, Crazy Kara D, D did ask, um, are the hosts referring to stalls and plateaus? Yes, we were in the beginning when we opened the show to get a topic out there just to get things started. But the next question for us coming in is from Zen Maiden, um, and she asks, have you eliminated dairy for a time in your journey, and has it worked for you? Khalid, let's start with you. Um. You know, I guess I did without even planning for it. I mean, I eliminated milk and cheese, which at the time was about 99% of my dairy intake. Um, you know, I guess if you're if you're counting eggs as dairy or not, some people do, some people don't. But um, so yeah, I guess I did try that at the beginning of my journey, um, and but not as far as a stall. Just as when I was doing it, those are things that I needed to cut out because I didn't have much control over them. I've never um, tried cutting out dairy at all. I've never thought about it. Um, maybe if I hit another stall at some point, I maybe consider it, but let's cross our fingers done. and hope that we won't hit another stall. Have you ever gone um, over to Wisconsin and bought some cheese? Yeah. Cheese is a part of my diet, and I, um, I do eat a lot of cheese. But I know when to cut it back and when to eat it. You know, but I've never cut it out completely. Uh, cheese is a major red light food for me. Um, the, the good thing was, was when I started cutting dairy back on dairy, I never cut it out. When I started cutting back, I realized that I didn't get as mucousy and congested. So I do believe that I have some lactose issues. Now, I can enjoy cheese if I go out and have a couple pieces of pizza or if I put a little bit of cheese on something when I'm out to eat and it doesn't bother me. But consuming a lot of cheese or dairy for me is not something that I will do. Um, for one, I don't think it's healthy personally to consume a lot of dairy. That's just my opinion, and I'm not a physician, a doctor, a dietitian, or none of it. But that's my belief, and um, I think it's okay in moderation, and that's how I use it. And my moderation is out of the home so that I can keep it under control. Um, Real quick, I know I just asked the last one, but I'm just going to throw this out there because I don't think any of us are, and correct me if I'm wrong, you two, but um, Susan asked, Taming the Food Beast, are any of you emotional eaters, and if so, how do you deal with it? I am not an emotional eater, so I cannot weigh in on that. I'm not either. Um, the only reason why I eat is because I'm greedy and I love the taste of food. Um, I'm not. I, I don't consider myself an emotional eater. Um, but if I am upset and I'm dealing with, you know, sometimes I want to eat, um, I just try to distract myself, drink water, you know, I try to stay aware of it. Um, I think when it comes to emotional eating, sometimes we, um, we don't, we're not conscious of it. And I think that's the key is to stay conscious of what you're doing to soothe your emotions. Uh, we have a question from Carrie Perichel. 
To all the hosts, what is your favorite YouTube video that inspires you to stay on your journey? Khalid, if you're first. Oh. <laughs> I'm buying myself some time. Wow. <laughs> I have the answer to mine. Okay. Yeah, you go first, and Julie. <laughs> okay. Um, I will say that um, I think that my very first video... Um, when I look back at my very first video, that is the video that I look at when I see myself talking and my face looks swollen and it just doesn't even look like me. It inspires me. It reminds me of where I was and where I don't want to ever be again. And um, to throw a YouTuber out there, um, I have to say that when I'm needing motivation, I turn to Rob's channel, and I mean, he, he's one of my best friends, but um, not only that, his videos are so encouraging and so motivational, and even if you look back at his very beginning videos, I always look at those and think, here is a man, 322 pounds, who believed that he could do it, and um, all, all his videos have a message of some sort that I can apply in some area of my life, whether I was at the beginning of my journey or here now at this, the toward the end of my journey, the end of my goal journey, not forever journey. Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. All right, you didn't give me enough time, um, so I I can't think of any videos. Um, um, okay, mine that inspires me. Um, she's she's kind of been a wall a little bit from YouTube, and we all go through that phase where that happens. So um, it's totally fine, and I understand, but. The whole reason I started making videos on YouTube was because Angie from Canada, um, Dogstress, and I forgot the number, it might be 77? 73. 73. Dogstress 73. Um, good friend of mine, I text with her, I send her cards, we email. Um, she really. I was watching her and I thought, you know what, if she can do this, I can do this. So I went to her videos a lot for motivation in the beginning and encouragement, and it really, really helps me. So I would have to say that that is where the inspiration and encouraging started for me. We miss you, Angie. Come back. Okay, I can say real quick, not a particular video, but one thing that has you lately... You had your chance. You had what? your chance. <laughs> Um, watching Elliot Hulse workout videos, that's what does it for me. Um, really, watching his videos, um, his deadlifts, and his, all of his workouts, really, and just hearing him talk about working out and lifting weights and stuff, that's what really gets me, like, amped up. Okay, we have a question coming in from Zen Maiden. It says, do you think it's a problem to change your goal upward, or would you consider it, or would you consider it giving it up? Like giving up, I would guess. Like maybe she's saying if you set your goal low and then you move it up, would you, would you consider that giving up? Um, I'm going to answer that right from the get-go because it's on my mind, and absolutely not. I think everybody sets a number goal when we're starting this journey because you have to remember where we're at when a journey starts. We're overweight, we're miserable, we're unhappy a lot of us. There's a reason why we're doing this, okay, whatever it might be. But we learn as we go through the journey the importance of the reason that we're truly, truly doing this. And that's for great health and happiness. But when we start, we want to have a smaller pant size. We want to see a certain number on the scale. We want to be like we were in high school or whatever. And people, you need to let it go. We're not in high school. We're not 17 and 18 anymore. We're adults, okay? So you got to have a realistic goal. And that, that's what I believe. But my thought on this is absolutely not. When we set our goal, if we decide to change it down the road, it's not giving up. It's being realistic. And when you are at your point of health and happiness, it's your decision. It's your journey. You make the decisions, no one else. And if someone thinks it's giving up, it's really none of their business. So who cares? Let them think what they want to think. For me, I would, um, I don't really have a, a, a number goal, so it's hard. And I think it's for that reason. I mean, I can't look back at a point in my life where I say, I want to look like I did then, and this is how much I weighed. 
So I don't. So this is all new territory for me. So you know, for me, I part of, in my channel it says like about losing a hundred pounds, but that was literally just a number. Um, I don't know. I would have to get to 192. I probably can get there, but if I get to 200 and it feels like this is a comfortable weight for me, especially when I'm trying to build muscle, then I'll stay at 200. Most likely, I'll drop under that. But you know, and and in general, I don't think it's giving up. Um, if somebody's doing it for the right reasons, I mean, you know, somebody just feels like I'm tired of being disciplined, then you know, then there's then there's something. To lot more than just the weight going on with them in their journey but I think if someone just says you know what I'm comfortable with this weight even though I said 160 I'm comfortable at 175 then they're comfortable with 175 and no they're not giving up I feel like um, it's my goal and it's it's anybody's goal they set it so it can be whatever number they want if they want to move up a goal that's that's what they can do I mean um, like Rob said you don't see the whole picture and you can't like it's hard to picture yourself at a certain weight, you know, now, even if you were this weight years ago, your body has changed. It's been years. So I really don't think um, it's an issue. I don't think it's a problem. I think um, that there are times where people need to be open to that because, um, you know, sometimes we set goals and they're not realistic. So that's what I would say. I don't think it's a problem. Do what you want. We have a question uh, from Tony Yates, and um, <clears throat> he wants to know if um, we share our YouTube videos with those in our everyday lives, or do we keep it a secret? So, uh, I can talk about this. Okay. I have, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> I gave, um, like, some people know about it, and some don't. I don't try to keep it a big secret. If they ask me, I'll tell them. A lot of times people ask me what I've done, and so I always tell them about YouTube because it has been a key part of my journey. Um, there are people um, like my in-laws that are just like not really super into my weight loss journey, and they don't ask questions, they don't talk about weight loss, so I don't really give them information. Um, my brother's on YouTube, so of course he knows. And then um, like my mom, my parents, I mean, a lot of my friends and family know but it's not something that I just go around telling everyone. I'm not on Facebook anymore. And when I was on Facebook, I would say, if you're interested in, in watching my channel, let me know. So I knew who was kind of seeing it and stuff before I gave it out. Um, for me, no, I don't keep it a secret. I don't care if somebody knows that they want to follow my journey. Great. If they don't, um, that's absolutely their um, right not to. So that's totally fine with me. For me, you know, I've never really shared my YouTube channel, but I do share my blog. Um, and I put some of my videos on the blog, but for some reason I just never, whether it be on Facebook or even in person, I really don't tell too many people about the uh, YouTube channel. But it's not on purpose that I'm hiding it. Just, just don't. Um, I noticed, and I want to touch base on this because Kira D has brought up an issue where she made a statement saying, Rob, keeping it real here, you said that you eat in response to feelings that you deserve to treat or a sense of entitlement. To me, that is feeling or an emotion, not just a taste for food. Um, I guess basically we can pretty much can put anything to emotion. What I'm trying to say, Kara, is that I don't get upset or I don't get frustrated. I was not upset when I did my last binge. Um, so I guess pretty much everything we, we do can be related to feelings. Um, I know that you believe that that's related to feelings and emotion and that's your right to believe that and that's fine. I disagree with you and I don't think that I have an emotional or behavioral eating problem and that's where I stand on the issue. So I wanted to address that because you brought it up and you absolutely have a right to feel the way you do and that's great. I disagree with you and I don't feel that I eat for emotional reasons. We have another yes. question yes. from Zen Maiden. Uh, she asked, do you use distraction when trying to consume less food and what type other than working out? So, Julie? 
Do I use distraction to try to eat less food? Um, well, I, a lot of times if I'm, if I like want more food, but I'm not hungry, um, or I want more food, but I don't want to eat it. Um, then I'll just like drink my water, try to get it filled up on that. Um, some of my, I have like these strategies that I do and I don't know where I learned them, but you know, in my mind, I'm one of those people. I always have to have seconds. That's just how I've been brought up. You know, I fill in my plate with seconds. So if I want two pieces of pizza, I will put one piece on my plate, eat it, then go back and get the second piece instead of putting both pieces on my plate because I feel like I get more when I make two trips up. I don't know. It's it's totally um just a mental thing. Um, I have done the whole. Sorry, my cats. <laughs> Um, I have done the whole thing where, like, you know, you've eaten on a smaller plate and all that. It doesn't work for me. Just excuse the cat. <laughs> uh, for me, I would say that I don't distract myself, um, but I do drink a lot of water. Like, really, that's that's probably the biggest thing that I do. Um, and sometimes I'll have, you guys remember those quest bars I talked about? Those things can really, like, fill you up. Um you know, so I'll have one of those, and I'll take these little small bites because you know, they're so dense, and then just drink water with it. And even if I want to eat something when I'm just like being greedy or I have this craving, I can't fit anything in my stomach without feeling sick. So I do that sometimes, which you know may or may not be healthy because I'm in the bathroom all the time. But you know, who knows? Um, I don't think that I would use distractions. I think what I try to do is assess the situation and see if I'm physically hungry or mentally hungry. If I'm mentally hungry. I pull in the reins and I say, you've already had something, you know, you physically shouldn't, can't be or shouldn't be hungry, and I try to avoid eating. If I am physically hungry, then I will get something to eat, because if I'm physically hungry, then I feel that I should eat. So that's where I am on that one. I don't have my feet up. So I can't Mine's see. down too. Hold on, sorry. <laughs> okay, well, the next question is for me, so I can just read it. Um, it's from uh, Daymac VSG, and he just asked, "So it's been a rough month for you. This is the true test for all of us, um, weight loss surgery community, and others alike. What can you tell us that might help us get through the same situation?" <laughs> um, that that would be a yeah, it'd be great if I knew that. But um, I guess. What I could say, honestly, is just keep trying to assess where you are. The thing for me is that I thought it was just things that was happening one day at a time. You know, one day where I got off track, where I didn't track my food, where I didn't, uh, you know, and I weigh myself daily. I used to, and I just wasn't even wasn't even doing that. Um, yeah, there were different things I wasn't doing that's normal part of my routine. And I just thought, oh, it's just one day. I'll get back into it the next day, and then the next day, and the next day. And then when I look back, it's like, wow, for the last two weeks, I've only tracked my food twice. I've only done cardio once. I've done, you know, so I gave, it was a long period of time before I actually looked back and assessed, like, wow, I'm in a rut right here. I'm having a bad period. And you know what? I don't feel motivation to get out of this. So I think that would be one thing is to really keep frequently checking where your heart and where your mind is with it. Um, and just depending on what you're doing, I guess you can set up other things, you know, that will kind of be markers for you. If you don't do something, you know that there may be a problem. But for me, I would just say keep trying to assess where you are, you know, in your head and heart. Uh, Michael VSG asks, how much water do y'all get in in a day? In, um how do you get it in? I used to um, shoot for, a, well, I used to drink like eight ounces. That's just being real. <laughs> but um, when I'm conscious about my water, I tried doing a gallon for a while. And I could definitely get it in. But it was becoming like this chore, and it was so hard for me to get in. So now I shoot for 96 ounces a day. I have um, a water bottle. It's not with me right now. But um, it's 32 ounces, and I fill it three times during the day. And so I know that when I drink it three times that I've gotten my 96 ounces in, and that's how I get my water in. 
I usually drink five bottles of 16.9 um, ounce, so at least 84 ounces a day. Um, sometimes I'll have more, it just depends, but 90% um, of the beverage that I drink daily is water anyway. So um, that's about, on average, what I would get in would be about 84 ounces. Um, me, I think it's, uh, it's at least 160 ounces. Um, I usually drink a gallon at work because I have a 32 ounce bottle and we have a water cooler there, so I usually fill it up about four times. Um, sometimes I'll even have protein shake in water, so that'll be another like 16 ounces. I usually don't count that, but and then when I come home, I usually have two or three of these bottles. So two of those bottles would put me up to about 160, and then I go on from there. Julia, is your feet up? No. Okay. Um, the next question is coming in from Zen Maiden, and she says, are you scared of maintenance, and how will you keep yourself in check? With maintenance, um, yeah. I will weigh myself. I'll keep weighing myself, and um, I don't know that I'll weigh every day, but at least once a week. Um, but knowing myself, I probably will, you know, hop on the scale. But it's like, if I forget, it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, but definitely the scale will help me keep in check. My clothes will keep me in check. Um, and I'm actually, at that point, I think that's what will control me more than a scale. Because really a scale, is, you know, it gives you a number. But nobody can see your number. The clothes are going to be the thing for me I think that I'll rely on the most how they feel, because I think that's a good adjustment. And when I need to readjust, maybe I'll go back to tracking food for a week or reevaluate what I'm doing. For me, um, I, I'm i not worried about maintenance. Um, I'm more worried about getting there. But um, when I'm at maintenance, I don't think it'll be a big deal because for me, um, I'll, I'll be really into weight training and strength training a lot. So I'll go through periods where I'm trying to put on weight on purpose. You know, I'll go through a bulking phase where I maybe try to gain 15 pounds over three months or something like that, and then try to lose it one pound a week or something to cut, you know, as I try to build strength. So I think I'll always have little mini goals. Um, once I get to my ultimate goal now, then I think I'll have little mini goals for a two, three-month period or so. Um, so that should be enough to keep me alive. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to maintenance. I'm not, um, I'm not afraid of it. I think that there will be ups and downs in maintenance as real life happens, and um, we're, we're trying to learn on the journey to change our mind, to change our life. And if things get out of hand, then we pull the reins in. And the way that most of us would probably do that would be by using a scale. So if you're at your, um, your new normal, your goal weight, and you see it start to go up a little bit, you pull in the reins and make adjustments as needed. Um, but it's important that when you get to goal that you're able to um, live life without restrictions as far as um, yourself feeling guilty or feeling like you can't do something because we put so many restrictions on ourselves when we were heavy, a lot of us, that we don't want to have the same life at our new normal. We want to be able to uh, function and just do, do the things we want to do, but be able to pull the reins in when we need to. Now, there's a question that's coming in, but I, I have a question for you, Rob, that just picks up right off of what you just said. So I think it's a good time to stick it in. Um, so what's something that uh, you want to accomplish, you know, some goal that you have uh, that wasn't possible for you when you started your journey, but is possible for you now? And it doesn't have to be physical, but it can if, if it is. Right. I want to, um, I really want to get to the point where I feel more comfortable being in front of groups of people for recreational things, for events that I go to. Now, the job that I work at, I speak in front of people at office meetings and stuff like that, but I've been around these people for a long time. And I feel in my heart that they wouldn't be talking about me behind my back or whatever the case might be. But when I go into an, an arena for a basketball game or a volleyball game, I worried about being able to fit in the seat. I worried if I was at the concession stand with someone saying, oh, does he really need that? I mean, look at him. You know, worried about if people made comments like, oh, you know, he's fat. He probably stinks. 
things that, you know, sound funny, you know, when you can make light of them, but it's a serious situation. And I'm starting to be able to deal with that, and I'm starting to be able to um, go to those events and buy my ticket and walk in, get some, get a refreshment if I'm going to have it, um, and sit down and just enjoy the game and not be worried if somebody's looking at me or being worried that I got to pick my points when I'm going to cheer and be loud so that I'm not out of breath. You know, those things. And I'm getting there. And it's just going to get better as I go. So that's the answer to that. That's good. I, I like that answer. Um, and there is a question from Crazy Cara D. And uh, she says, I just lost it. Okay. Have you considered having some experts on the show, like a dietitian, psychologist, trainer, life coach, etc.? cetera? Um, I guess the easiest answer to that is uh, yes, we've discussed that um, in the past. I mean, it's harder to to coordinate something like that, but uh, we have discussed uh, doing that and maybe having like a Q and A. Um, but you know, there's a lot more involved as far as disclaimers and different things like that, and dispensing advice, even if they are, you know, licensed um, in a particular area. So, um, but yes, we have considered it and are considering it. I see a question, and I may be overlooking some questions, but I'm going to just read the first one in my feed. Um, this is from Sun Maiden, and it says, What is your biggest mental challenge in the journey right now? That actually was the next question, so you picked up right where we left off. Um, for me, the biggest mental challenge is... Um, well, right now, because of the whole thing that just happened with the tendon in my foot, it's obviously the scariness that goes through my mind that is my journey going to be somewhat derailed um, because I physically can't do what I had been doing before as far as endurance walking and the amount of walking that I'm doing. And, you know, I have, I have to look at it and say this. Could it change the way that the journey would go down the road, yes, but things can be thrown in our journey every day that could change it in a heartbeat. And I mean, for instance, perfect example, I mean, look what happened to Dee Dee, someone who had went all this way on this journey and then something, you know, happened and it changes the journey temporarily or sets you back some. Uh, we have to look at that as a way of learning and um, changing our mind. We were slowed down for a reason. Um, whatever happened with my foot, it slowed me down for a reason, but it doesn't have to be the end-all be-all. And I'll find other exercises that I can do that um, are going to allow my foot to recover and get better. So that's mine right now, is just really taking the time to realize that this has to be about health. This isn't about being that person that oh, I'm going to push through it, I'm going to push through it. That's not how I want to respect my body and I'm going to do what's best for my health, and that's follow my doctor's orders. All right. For me, I guess the biggest mental challenge is uh, knowing when something can, when one little thing can kind of push me over an edge. And uh, what I mean by that is either a frustration or even food. You know, knowing when, because I, mean, I believe we can eat, you know, what we want for the most part, you know, just as long as we are, are, you know, doing it in moderation and that we are not um, just overly indulging in something uh, to the point of bad health. But, um, you know, even in within that, you know, moderation for everyone is different. So, you know, for me to try to do something that someone else does, it may not work for me. You know, um, it's funny, I was actually, I actually sent, um, something to uh, Julie earlier today, an uh, email about this guy who um, is cutting, right? He's trying to lose weight right now. He's a, a power lifter and he's eating 4,000 calories a day in order to lose weight because his normal intake is between 4,500 and 5,000 calories a day to maintain his, his, his body weight. And he's only like 230 pounds. So he's not a huge guy. So, um, you know, just saying, like, if I tried to eat 4,000 calories, then, you know, I would, uh, yeah, I would probably balloon up to 300 pounds. So I guess the biggest struggle is trying to make sure that I know what I can handle mentally and physically and not try to 
measure my journey against someone else and try to do something some you know that someone else is trying to do. Like I said, it may be he may be eating things in moderation, but if I try it, it may trigger a part of an addiction that two months later I'm coming on here fifty pounds heavier, telling you guys that you know why I haven't been making videos for two months. So I just need to you know that's a mental challenge for me because I'm doing the same thing he's doing. I expect to be able to do the same thing in every area, and that's not the case. Um, for me, I would say I have two. Um, one would be that I'm almost at my goal, and um, sometimes I, I get in my head that, you know, if I lose, uh, let's say, 13 more pounds, and I'm at my goal, it's not going to make a big difference whether I stop where I am now or I'm at my, thir at my goal. Because I'm not going to change, my body's not going to change much more. You know, it's not that, and so I, I have to just say, like, Julie, you want to keep going. Because to me, I want to hit my goal. And um, so it's easy to just get complacent where I am and say, eh, forget it. And it's not because I can't get to my goal. It's because when I went to the doctor, the doctor was like, you're going to keep losing weight, right? So, I mean, it's, it's a healthy goal for me. Um, I'm not where I want to be right now. I'm not where my doctor wants me to be right now. So I have to remember to keep going. Um, and then the other mental um, challenge that I have is sometimes, and people might think this is crazy, but sometimes I still feel like I'm 241 pounds, and it hits me all the time. When I'm running, I think, oh, that car's probably looking at me and thinking that, why is this heavy girl running? And it's hard for me to remember. Every time I go shopping for clothes, I'm starting out in the plus size section, and I'm not there anymore. And it's hard for me to re remember that I'm not there anymore, and um, that I can move forward into a different and and not be not worry about um, what the car driving by thinks of. That I always worried my whole life because I was so worried about what people are thinking about my body, and um, so it's that. You know, I kind of want, I always think, like, I'm running by someone, and I always want to say, like, don't worry, I was 241 pounds once, you know, just so they know that I'm, that even though I might look big, I'm, I'm really, like, smaller than I was. And that is a huge mental hurdle for me, that people maybe wouldn't think that I would have. Okay, you guys, let's do a speed round, because we have some questions, and let's get to as many of them as we can, so we'll keep our answers short. So I'll just start reading them, and then we can all answer real quick, and I think we'll keep them moving fast. Tina said, if I were to come visit each of you, where would you take me for dinner? I would take her to an Italian pizza place. That's where I would take her. I would, I would take you to Moles, because I'm pretty sure you guys don't have that in South Dakota. Um, I would take you to, I would say Old Style Inn, because it's a um, place that has, like, really fancy food, and I know you're a princess. Tony Yates asked this question, who's your favorite YouTuber to watch that we may not know about? Also, how tall are you guys? Julie? Oh, that's hard. Um... Favorite YouTuber to watch that Besides you might not me. know about? Gosh, um, I feel like no, everybody knows they everybody. They may not know about. They, it could be someone that they may, they just may not know about. Um, oh my goodness, think I can't see my me. list of people right oh, now, so I can't think. <laughs> okay, this is a speed round. I can't do it, but I'm five foot two, almost. <laughs> okay, I'm five foot six, and um, I said his name before, but Elliot Hulse. The YouTube channel is Strength Camp, one word. Um, I'm five foot ten, and the favorite person that I always look for videos in their feeds right, feed right now is Brooke, crazy running mom. But a lot of us know her, so some people may or may not. Jody Joe asked the following question. What do you all feel is worse in your diet, carbs or fat? Make it quick. Julie, you have to go first. Um... I'm more conscious of carbs. I don't even know what how much fat I eat a day. Khalif? Um, <laughs> I'd say neither. It's, it's overall calories. If you're in a surplus, fat is worse. Um, for me, um, carbs or fat, I think they're both important to our diet, to our system, and I think it's about eating them in moderation and respecting both of them. Um, 
Susan, tamed, Taming the Food Beast says, do any of you come from a family with weight problems? I will start that, yes, I do. Most of my brothers and sisters are overweight a little bit, not obese, but they're overweight. And my mother is on the heavy side, my father is not. Okay, me, no. Um, yeah, no, that's it. Uh, I, I don't have too many problems with obesity. Yes, my dad has been overweight and battling his weight. Um, he is uh, just found out recently that he has diabetes, and he's always had high blood pressure. And then my mom um, has battled with her weight her whole life, but she's really at an average weight right now. But she has been very, very heavy in the past. Um, the next question is coming from Crazy Running Mom, and it says, do you see yourself as others see you? Question mark. Do you see yourself as fat when others see a changed person? Julie? Sometimes I do. You do what? Sometimes I see myself as fat, and okay. um, sometimes I see myself as changed. It depends on the day. Okay. Khalif? Uh, I would say 99% of the time I see myself as fat and probably just as fat as I was. And then that little 1%, I realize I've changed some. Um, I used to see myself as fat and overweight. I do not see myself that way anymore. And how others see me, of course I care about how they see me, but in the end, it really shouldn't matter. It should matter, you know, how we feel about ourselves. I think. Um, when people use the word tiny, that freaks me out. That I can't even wrap my mind around that one. Um, let's see, uh, JMAC uh, BSG asks question, host, in my journey, faith plays a major part in my success. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you say faith plays a part in your life? Uh, 10. 10 for me. I would say a 5 for me. Um, Looking for another, looking for the next question. Give me a second here. Um, looks like that's the questions. Let me just make sure not oh, we got something that might have came in. Hold on, sorry guys. Um, here, I got one. Okay, go ahead. I watched a video today about someone overcoming a fear of dead fish, and it just made me wonder. If anybody, any one of you have a fear of something that some people might think is silly. No, not, not me. <laughs> I, I'm afraid of heights that are out of my control, but I think there's a lot of people that are afraid of heights. So if I'm on a plane, I'm not afraid. Um, is that out of my control? Yes, but I'm not standing on the edge of a building looking over or... And a, and a Ferris wheel stopped at the top kind of thing. So those are the kind of heights that frighten me. So. I don't like mice or storms. Sometimes I cry when it, when it storms. Oh, here we go. But, but since I became a mom, I have to be really brave. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we got about two minutes left. So, um, Khalif, let's do our wrap-up and tell everybody good night and do our thing. All right. Um... Well, let me go to my list here. Um, so, all right, first, we just want to thank everybody for the great questions. And you guys asked so many great questions that we didn't get to ask our questions of each other. So um, we have them for the next time. But um, uh, I just want to tell you, next week, we're going to have um, Lovable Curves Maxi on. Uh, I just watched a video of hers today, and she's still doing great on her journey. Um, and the thing about her is that she's lost almost 100 pounds, but she is still on her journey. So you get someone who has both aspects, someone who's been successful, but someone who still has um, some room to go. On May 14th, Sarah, and her channel is Less of Sarah, will be talking to us about her journey and her experience with VSG. And she's a wonderful personality, and you guys will love her. Um, on May 21st, Amy, Living Avalon, uh, one of my favorite people in the world, um, is going to be on the show. So that's going to be absolutely amazing. And you guys will find her uh, phenomenal. Check out her channel, um, Living Avalon. Her name is Amy. On May 28th, 
Justin from Conquering Myself 2013 will be here to talk about the transformation that he went through recently and what lies ahead for him and his journey. Thank you. Um, yeah, again, just like I said, we want to thank you all. And I think we answered all the questions. If not, we'll look through and we make sure that, that we do answer them. Um, but again, this has been a really fun show. And I just appreciate all of you. Um, one thing I just want to say is that in the description box within the next 10 minutes will be a link. Once you go there, it will take you to everyone's channel that we just mentioned so you can check them out, subscribe to them ahead of time, and get your questions ready for them. Um, so, Rob, Julie, do you have anything you want to say? Nope. Have a good night, everybody, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next Tuesday. All right, everyone. Thank, thank you, everybody. Bye. See you next